Can I have a big juicy burger and a parma pizza, please? You got it, man. So you have a restaurant or a business and you need a digital board, signage board, or whatever they call them these days. Well, it shouldn't cost you hundreds of dollars and frustrating customer support. With only a Raspberry Pi 4, you can have a stunning, beautiful digital board that you can set up and control in a few minutes. If you are curious, stick around and I will show you the easiest way to do that. I also put the script in the video description, but before we begin, let's first install the operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Now, go ahead and grab your Raspberry Pi and a good micro SD card, sit in front of your computer and download this operating system. This is Twister OS. This is the operating system that we will be installing on that Raspberry Pi. Insert the micro SD card in your computer and flush Twister OS to it using Raspberry Pi Imager as I'm showing you here. As soon as it's done, take out the SD card from the computer and insert it in your Raspberry Pi. We are now halfway there. Let's go ahead and do a quick update. And now to the good stuff. Here it is. All you have to do is follow these steps. I have all the commands in the video description. You can copy them and paste them in your terminal. I sense that this area may need some explaining. Basically, what I am doing here is entering links to the files that I would like to see displayed on the screen. The way I'm doing this is placing all my files inside a designated folder documents folder in my case you can put as many files as you want you can use pdf files jpeg gif or even a website link for the sake of simplicity i'm going to name my files one two three four and five i have three jpegs one pdf and one gif if you place files in your documents folder the link should look something like this you can name the files whatever you want. To make things easier, I named the files something easy to edit and something that I can remember, so that every time I need to change or update the file, I can simply overwrite the existing file and keep the same name. That way I don't have to change the file configuration in terminal all the time. So right now what I'm doing is I'm entering the file path with the file name at the end. I hit space and enter the next file path. I will go ahead and enter all the file paths and after that I will test each file path and make sure that it's working. I can do that by simply just copying the file path and dropping it on a web browser. Next thing we need to do is adjust the sleep time. The sleep time basically means the amount of time you want each file displayed for. The default is 15 seconds. I'm going to change mine to 30 seconds. I believe that's reasonable. If you need to set each item for more than that, you can do that. You can do 45 seconds, 60 seconds, or whatever you like. Now let's go ahead and continue. The only item that you need to pay close attention to is echo display. You need to find out what the value of that is and make note of it. Now make sure you have the same echo display value reflected here in the environment display. 
Now we'll carry on with the final steps of the installation. As soon as I start kiosk services, the system will enter the kiosk mode. To exit the kiosk mode, press Ctrl Alt Delete on your keyboard, right click on Chromium browser and close it. Now let's check and make sure that everything is working. When we reboot the Raspberry Pi, our system should enter the kiosk mode immediately. Looks like mission accomplished to me. If you have any other ideas for this quick project, let me know in the video comments. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.